Did you know that the United States is the world's largest consuming machine of lumber? The massive volume has turned lumber into a key indicator of the overall health of the construction industry. But what exactly makes it such a strategic link in the U.S. economy? The production of lumber begins with logs that are sawn into boards of different sizes. These boards are then kiln-dried to reduce moisture, plain smooth, and surface treated to improve both durability and appearance. Through this standardized process, lumber becomes a commercial wood product that is strong, flexible, and widely applied in construction, interior design, and many other industries. Follow along as we reveal the journey that transforms raw logs from the forest into standardized lumber, a material that continues to serve as a cornerstone of construction, commerce, and daily life for millions of American families. In the United States, lumber is more than just sawn wood. It's the very foundation of the entire construction industry. The tradition of building homes with wooden frames, combined with abundant forest resources and flexible costs, has led to nearly 9 out of 10 new houses being built with lumber. This material is not only tied to everyday life, but also serves as a vital link connecting multiple industries. Because of its central role, lumber is especially sensitive to shifts in trade policy. Canada is the largest supplier of softwood to the U.S., and a single change in tariffs can create ripple effects across the market. When import duties surge from 14.5% to as high as 34.5%, lumber prices in the U.S. spiked, instantly adding tens of thousands of dollars to the cost of building a home. It's a clear example of how one policy decision can impact not only bilateral trade, but also the dream of home ownership for millions of Americans. The journey of lumber begins in the vast forests stretching across North America. Here, every tree is chosen with care, never at random. Each must pass a strict evaluation. Only those that have reached maturity with trunks wide enough, straight, and free from signs of disease are cut down. Once the conditions are met, the roar of chainsaws echoes through the forest, steel blades slicing through thick wood, and in just moments, a towering tree sometimes more than a hundred feet tall, comes crashing to the ground. That moment closes the natural life cycle of the tree, while opening a new industrial chapter for lumber. In immediately after being felled, the trunks are cut into neat sections, stripped of branches, and quickly hauled out of the forest. Giant forestry machines with hydraulic claws lift and load the logs onto heavy-duty trucks or specialized trains. An entire transport system is designed for one purpose, to minimize the time the wood spends exposed outdoors, preserving its quality and reducing waste before it reaches the sawmill. Yet behind these seemingly routine operations lies a debate that has never quieted, the origin of each log. For decades, much of the lumber came from old growth forests, where trees hundreds of years old provided dense, beautiful wood with high commercial value, but concerns over biodiversity and the threat of climate change have increasingly cast doubt on this model. In reality, nearly half of the world's forests have been cut or degraded to meet human demand. This is why the industry is shifting toward plantation forests and secondary growth. Areas planned, cultivated, and managed on cycles that secure a steady wood supply while easing pressure on ancient forests. This shift reflects the effort to balance economic growth with environmental protection. From the very beginning, lumber is not just logs newly felled, but also a symbol of the larger question. The sustainability of an industry deeply tied to the dream of home ownership and the daily lives of millions. After leaving the forest, the massive logs are gathered at the sawmill's log yard. This is an immense open space where hundreds of trunks are stacked in long rows, like giant stockpiles waiting to begin their transformation. To preserve quality, many mills spray water continuously over the logs or submerge them in holding ponds, preventing cracks and protecting them from mold before processing. From the yard, the logs move on to sorting. Workers and laser scanners work together to assess each trunk, identifying the species of wood, measuring its diameter, and checking for defects or warping. Logs with the best characteristics are reserved for top-grade lumber, while those with more knots, 
greater curvature, or visible cracks are directed to other uses where such imperfections matter less. This entire process not only maximizes economic efficiency, but also demonstrates the precision of extracting value from every log, ensuring that no part goes to waste. Before the logs meet the saw blades, many of them pass through a debarking machine. The rough outer layer, often filled with soil and insects, not only wears down the steel, but also affects the finish of the lumber. Debarking is most commonly applied to softwoods such as pine, fir, or spruce, the dominant species in construction where consistency and stability are essential. In smaller workshops or for handcrafted products, logs are sometimes sawn directly and surface treated later, and in some cases, the bark is even left on to preserve a rustic, natural look. This process produces countless tiny wood chips, and not a single piece is wasted. Every fragment is collected and sent into the next stage of production, embodying the principle of making full use of resources and moving towards sustainability. How these fragments are ultimately repurposed is something you'll see more clearly at the very end of this journey. Once a log is secured on the conveyor, a laser scanner sweeps across its entire length. Red beams record every detail, diameter, curvature, off-center alignment, even the large knots that could affect the cut. From this data, specialized software creates a three-dimensional model and runs multiple cutting scenarios. Within seconds, the computer selects the optimal pattern, maximizing usable volume while preserving quality. With the cutting map ready, the log moves into a high-powered bandsaw. Depending on the requirements, the mill may choose plain sawn cuts, slicing parallel along the log's length to produce high volume with sweeping grain patterns, though more prone to warping over time. Or quarter sawn cuts, splitting the log into four sections before sawing each, yielding straight, even grain with greater stability and higher value, though at the cost of lower yield and more labor. These two methods embody the constant balance between economic efficiency and long-term quality. Immediately after the method is chosen, the breakdown sawing begins. Steel blades, sometimes more than 10 feet long, roar to life, slicing massive logs into larger slabs, often wide planks or semi-finished blocks. This is the stage where the log is opened, separating its core from its outer sections and preparing it for edging and precise trimming. The slabs are neatly stacked on the conveyor, ready for the next stage. Throughout the process, an automated system monitors every detail. Blade speed, vibration, and the thickness of each cut are continuously measured and adjusted by sensors. Amid the thunderous sound of steel biting into wood, the first rough planks emerge from a once whole log, the earliest form of lumber marking the true beginning of its transformation. From the breakdown stage, the large slabs continue down the conveyor to the precision saw line. Here, narrower and sharper blades are used to resaw the slabs into boards with exact thickness. This process, known as resawing, transforms rough blocks into commercial grade lumber, with thickness ranging anywhere from just over an inch to more than four inches, depending on the intended use. Every cut is tracked by sensors, keeping the margin of error close to zero. Once the rough boards are produced, the next step is edging. The uneven, irregular sides near the bark are trimmed away by auxiliary saws to create clean, square edges. After edging, each board can be stacked, transported, and processed with ease. Even the discarded strips are not wasted. They are collected and repurposed into particle board, plywood, or biomass fuel. At this stage, the slabs have become flat, straight-edged boards, lumber stacked in seemingly endless rows. Throughout the process, technicians monitor operations on site, performing random inspections on each batch to ensure that every board meets exact specifications before moving on to the following stages. After sawing and edging, lumber still retains a high level of natural moisture, sometimes nearly half its weight. If left untreated, the wood would easily warp, crack, or deform during use. To stabilize its structure, the boards are neatly stacked before being placed into the kiln. 
Thin wooden spacers are laid between each layer, creating gaps that allow heated air to circulate evenly, helping the entire batch dry consistently from the inside out. Inside the kiln, powerful fans push hot air through those gaps in constant circulation. Temperatures can range from 120 degrees Fahrenheit up to more than 210, depending on the species and the final purpose of the wood. At the same time, humidity inside the chamber is carefully regulated. At the beginning, moisture is drawn out quickly, while later the pace is slowed so that the core dries in harmony with the surface, preventing splits. The goal of drying is to bring the wood's moisture content to an ideal range, about 15 to 19% for construction lumber, and as low as 6 to 8% for high-grade furniture. This makes the lumber lighter to transport, more stable to build with, and more resistant to weather, while also reducing the damp conditions that allow mold or insects to thrive. It is the step that transforms green, fragile wood into a safe and durable material after being dried and plain smooth, the finished lumber is sent to the packaging area. Here, automated conveyors stack the boards into neat bundles, ranging from a few dozen to several hundred pieces, aligned so that every edge matches perfectly. Hydraulic arms compress the stack, while steel bands or heavy-duty plastic straps are wrapped tightly around it, turning the bundle into a solid block that can weigh up to several tons. To protect the wood from moisture during storage and transport, the outer surfaces of each bundle are often wrapped in thick plastic sheeting or covered with waterproof tarps. Some mills go further, enclosing the stacks in wooden frames for extra safety, especially for long-distance export shipments. Each bundle is clearly labeled with details such as wood species, dimensions, production date, and destination, ensuring easy traceability and distribution. Finally, forklifts load the secured bundles onto trucks or into containers. The entire process is designed to prevent shifting, warping, or damage before the lumber reaches its final users. While finished lumber bundles leave the mill, the side streams, wood chips, offcuts, and sawdust are far from waste. Instead, they begin a parallel journey transformed into a man-made material known as MDF, an engineered wood now found in buildings and furniture everywhere. The first step is collection and primary cleaning. Scraps from across the mill are gathered into holding yards, then passed through magnets and screens to remove nails, stones, or other contaminants. Only clean wood remains. Immediately after, the material is ground in high-speed disc refiners, breaking it down from chips into fine, uniform wood fibers. These fibers form the very foundation of MDF. Next, the fibers enter a mixing chamber where ultra-fine sprays coat each strand with urea formaldehyde or melamine urea formaldehyde resin. This gives every fiber a binding jacket, ready to lock together into a solid mass. Depending on the application, moisture-resistant or fire-retardant additives may be introduced at this stage. The fiber resin blend is then spread into a thick mat across a long conveyor. Rollers compress it lightly, creating a sheet many times thicker than the final product. In the hot press stage, the mat is subjected to pressures of several hundred tons and temperatures exceeding 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Within minutes, the resin liquefies, flows between the fibers, and then hardens again, fusing millions of strands into one unified board. This is the moment MDF is truly born. Once it leaves the press, the panel is cooled gradually to prevent warping, then trimmed to precise dimensions by edge cutting saws. The final step is multi-stage sanding, which levels both surfaces to a near perfect smoothness, ready for veneer, melamine, or paint finishes. From what once were mere leftovers of lumber production, a new material emerges, stable, versatile, and deeply embedded in modern life. MDF not only maximizes the value of every tree harvested, but also extends the story of wood far beyond the sawmill floor. From a single tree in the forest of North America, lumber undergoes a long and complex journey. It begins in the logging stage, 
where every tree is carefully chosen based on its age and the quality of its trunk, before the roar of saws tears through massive logs. Rough cuts, precision sawing, and edging gradually shape them into boards. Then comes kiln drying inside chambers where temperature and humidity are tightly controlled, turning green wood that would easily warp into stable material. Once planned, packaged, and distributed, lumber becomes an essential link in American construction, helping raise millions of homes and countless structures. Lumber, therefore, is far more than just cut wood. It is proof of the bond between nature and technology, between traditional forestry and modern manufacturing. Every smooth board you see today carries within it a silent journey, from deep forests to urban projects, from the hands of loggers to automated production lines. And what about you? Among all these steps, which part impressed you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to keep following the factor in on future journeys as we uncover the hidden stories behind the materials that have shaped our modern world.